Hello again, I'm Gamma Rays, back with another video on how to improve, tweak, and simplify Storm King's Thunder for you new DMs and for the vets. Now this right here is where I'll be discussing how to run chapter 2 of Storm King's Thunder. We'll start off with Tribor, and then in another video we'll go into Golden Fields and then Bryn Shander after that. But first, where's chapter 1? You're asking. Not here, I'm replying. Because I've never ran it, I'm not sure what information would work and what doesn't so i would as i said before run either a homebrew or the lost minds of fandelver but because i like you guys i searched the interwebs and i found this cool little post link down in the doobly doo that'll help you set up and run nights now that chapter one's out of the way let's head into chapter two of storm king's thunder rumblings Tribor! The attack on Tribor consists of many moving parts that are very hard to organize for new DMs specifically. You basically have an all out battle with two fire giants, let's refer to them as A and B, along with their small army that consists of axe beaks, magmans, orogs, orcs, horses, fortresses, magic, and swords. However, we won't be using those, we'll be changing them to fire elementals because fire bad. Instead of Orogs, use Azir. Instead of Orcs, use Fire Newt Warriors. Instead of Axe Beaks, use Fire Snakes. P.S.A. Give some monsters bows or javelins unless you want ranged attackers to decimate everything from atop of unburnt buildings. Thankfully, SKT has a beautiful map that has already been gridded and ready to use for these encounters. As a new DM, what happens when you see this new beautiful open map? You use it, God. Damn it! Except you shouldn't, you really shouldn't. Any DM worth their salt would know what a nightmare this scene would be to run. And the first time I ran it, I wasn't worth my salt, to put it mildly. Don't make this one huge fight where the players see the giants coming and begin fighting from the outskirts of town. You'll have to control so many enemies, it's not even fun. The fight will drag on for like 10 rounds while the enemies just run in and attempt to burn buildings. It'll grind the session to a halt. You have to split this encounter into several parts, namely three. One, the attack commences. Two, the first battle with the minions. And three, final battle with the fire giants. But Gamma, how do we do that? I hear you say. Simple. Step one, the attack commences at night and the party are all sleeping soundly. After a relatively safe day of talking to, buying and selling from NPCs, the character with the highest passive perception wakes up first to sounds of roars and screams. They look out the window, if they have a window. Buildings are up in flames. They can see people stuck on the second story windows. They'll wake everyone up to go and help, and by God, they'll be helping. They have several options to do at this point. Save people from burning buildings, help with the effort to douse the fires, and prevent other buildings from igniting when they witness a magman attempting to do the deed. Second step, the first battle with the minions. You slowly but surely guide them towards the North Shield house, if they weren't in it already where they'll find Urgala Meltimer fighting off a small squad of enemy combatants with ferocity using her great axe, with the strength and expertise of someone who once used to be an adventurer. Don't give them control of her. They'll have their hands full with their own characters, and you don't want someone to just throw her in there because she's an NPC. In this encounter, I personally used five Aziers on my second run that moved together as a squad and systematically targeted one person at a time to bring their enemies down. And during this, Magmans would be running around lighting everything on fire. And yes, even the innocent trees! Customize this as you see fit for your party. The number of uh, monsters, the type of monsters, and how many Magmans there are that are lighting everything on fire. It'll give them other objectives than just to mow down the enemies. Of course, they'll be fighting the main force that is fighting against Urgal but they will have to find a solution for the magmans, especially, that are lighting buildings and trees. And after they help Urgala Meltimer fight off these monsters, suddenly they hear a crash coming from the center of town. She urges them to hurry, while she and several others continue to douse the flames by using water from the pond behind her end. Step 3. The final battle with the giants. They head towards the fort in the town square and are greeted 
with a boulder crashing onto the building itself. This is where they see Darathra Chandra loading a mounted ballista on top of the keep and firing off at something in the distance. And because it's at night, its silhouette is barely visible. 20 foot tall, walking through the smoke and the darkness about 200 feet away. The giant throws another projectile and you see a flaming carriage flying through the air as it crashes right next to you. Soldiers all around you fighting for their life against the Aesirs and the fire newts that are mounted on the fire snakes. The path towards this giant seems to be long and through the battlefield in front of the players, but giants be damned, they'll do all they can to stop them from destroying this place. The players wade through the battlefield towards the giant and are greeted with a fight for survival like they've never had before. Not only is fire giant A ready to fight and attack anything that enters into the West Caravan Campground Area T3. It is joined by a group of magma and smoke methods. Not to mention the hulking figure of Fire Giant B that appears to be digging out the well behind it with its great sword. Now I'm not gonna lie, this is a borderline TPK. To show the protags that giants are here and they are a goddamn threat. So you need to scale it accordingly if you want it to be winnable. Just keep in mind that one fire giant against a party of four or five adventure of level five is going to be a cakewalk. Now here's the kicker. If the PCs are resourceless and low on HP, they might not go to the fire giants. If that's the case, you can play up the ballistas and heavy bowgun soldiers in the keep that are firing and keeping the giant at bay and narrating how the party with some athletics and arcana checks and acrobatic checks whatever you deem necessary for the types of characters that they are playing spend the rest of this time aiding the soldiers and preventing the army from advancing soon after fire giant B suddenly pops out of the digging motion and plops a huge gauntlet onto its shoulder a gauntlet that by itself is as large as the fire giant and it begins to drag it away fire giant A turns around after one last rock to the fort, which is borderline destroyed at this point, and walks away. Their army stands and fights a few more minutes as they begin to retreat line by line. And so the battle concludes as the peace returns after a night full of battles and raging flames. The city goes quiet. The sun's rays bathe the blood-soaked ground, showing the aftermath of such a chaotic battle. Many lives were lost. The city was saved. The following day, Darathra organizes the dead with her remaining troops and holds a funeral for them. You can use this lull to have Urgala talk to them and tell them of the giant slaying weapon her old friend has at Zymorven Hall. So no change is needed in my honest opinion. Unless, it's, this is a big unless, unless you want to run the Kraken's Gamble when they head to Yartar after Tribal, then you don't really need Urgala to give them the quest because you would reward them with a giant slaying weapon in the stash of the Abalith Usith there. So it's up to you. I would say keep the giant slaying weapon at Zymorven Hall for the time being. There's a cool little trick you can do for that, and I'll tell you in another video. If Darathra sees the Protags, assuming they haven't met her if you didn't use the Lost Mine of Fandal with the plot hook, she takes them aside and gives them her quest as per the book. No need to change this up either. You can also give them Othavir's quest if you feel like it, but, but I didn't. It's a, it's a fun heist to say the least. Don't give them Geller and Fohammer's quest, because it probably won't be needed. In conclusion, the attack commences at night. You split it into a rescue mission, then a minion battle, then the fire giant battle. You give them their quest from Urgala, Darathra, and Othovir, if you want. And after that, you send them on their way. They're gonna have to go through Yarta to get to Everland. And then from Everland to Silvery Moon into Zymorven Hall. Now you prep for Kraken's Gamble. Zephyros will come in between Yarta and Everland. Want some more info on how to spice up SKT? Ask your questions down below, and I'll answer to the best of my knowledge and experience. If you like this video, then please crit that like button, send this video to other DMs, and make that subscription check. Stay tuned for more videos about D&D weekly, maybe and follow my Twitch page to catch my streams. This is Gamma Rays, over and out.